egotistical, so unpredictable Here on the SNL Network Yes, that is right. Welcome everybody on in to the Saturday Night Network for a very special interview today with the great current cast member of Saturday Night Live, Mikey Day. Yes, that's right. We're going to get to talk to him in just a little bit and ask him some really fun questions. And James Stevens is here with me to preview that conversation. So James, how you doing? Mikey Day. I'm excited. Uh Mikey's had a great season. I mean, he's 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 one of my favorites. But this season is he's on a, a new trajectory. You know, the traffic altercation, which was just a recent uh, Waffle House science room, of course, the return, the sequel to David S. Pumpkins. It's going to be fun. Yeah, not to mention State Farm, Mario Kart. I mean, he's had hit after hit after hit this year. So I was very excited to get to talk to Mikey today. And the main reason that we're doing so today is because Mikey achieved a very important uh, milestone here in this season, the 500 sketch mark. He is only one of 29 cast members to ever get to 500 sketches on the show, which is a, you know, emblematic of his career which includes longevity and lots of great moments throughout his seven years as a cast member even more as a writer so we are here to celebrate that on the show today and i cannot wait to get to hear from him bravo mikey day 500 sketches who remembers raise your hand who remembers him being on maya and marty to begin with right Right. Yes. Yeah, that would be uh, all the way back between, I think, 41 and 42. <laughs> so uh, that goes back a while. And of course, uh, you know, there was some weird transition between 41 and 42. And he comes on and he's a lightning rod and just absolutely sparked the show and has been very consistent throughout his time there. But especially this year, I think all of the fans, all of our listeners have noted that Mikey is having one of the best seasons on the show this season, perhaps even the MVP. So I think it is a perfect time for us to get to talk to Mikey. So James, Without further ado, let's get to my conversation with Mikey Day today, and then we'll come back afterwards and discuss what we heard. So enjoy our interview with Mikey Day. Yes, that is right. We are privileged to be joined by Mikey Day, incredible writer, and in his seventh season as a cast member at Saturday Night Live. Mikey, how you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Now, yeah, of course, I have a question. Do you guys do the the airtime thing where you we do do that? Do yes, <laughs> that is us. How how do you do that? Is my question. Do you like do you if someone's in a sketch, do you just use that time or do you use literal time where the camera's on that person? Does that make sense? Yes, it's literal time where the camera's on that person. So we have, so you have, one to have of, like a stopwatch and you're like, yeah, it's not, me, it's not me personally, but it's one of my colleagues, Mike Murray, he's the best and he does uh, screen time for everyone who's on the show. So it is a, yeah, it's, it's really cool. He's doing it for the entire series going all the way back. So we'll have like consistent numbers throughout the show. It's a uh, quite the endeavor. So he's yeah. like Jane, Jane Curtin logged <laughs> the following amount of time, like yeah, all for the sure. way. Yeah, people people love that stuff. But I want to talk to you today because I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to dive in. And really, the main reason that we're having you on today on the Saturday Night Network is because of a big milestone you achieved this season. Back in the Aubrey Plaza episode, you appeared in your 500th SNL sketch, only the 29th cast member to ever do so. So what does this milestone mean to you? That's insane. I had no idea that I reached 500. Although you guys, Mr. Murray probably knows. <laughs> Mr. What's his name? Matt? Mike? Mike Mike Murray. Yeah. Mike Murray. I just want to talk about Mike Murray the whole time. Um, no problem. We could do this. Enough. Um, <laughs> we could talk more about it. It's crazy. As I said, I had no idea it reached 500, but it just, it feels like it's gone by really fast. And that's just appearing, right? It's not written counting things well if you did appear in a sketch while you were a writer then that would count as a sketch appearance so oh, okay but it's not like if i just wrote like in my first few years as a writer the those don't count towards the 500 i was just no curious. no but certainly okay, you've, got it, you've got it, got uh, it. contributed to a lot more uh, many more sketches throughout your time at the show right, so right. 
yeah, yeah. It's just so I've been in 500. Wow, that's insane. I mean, it's the best job ever. So I'm very humbled and um, excited. 500. That's yeah. insane. Yeah, wow. it's really, really congratulations because obviously you've had an incredible career at the show. And uh, to Thank me, this, is, so this has been a really fascinating season for you in season 48 because many of your castmates that you worked with in previous years, especially, you know, Alex and Melissa, who you started with as a cast member, um, you know, departed the show and obviously Kate and Adie and eventually Cecily. So how were you feeling about coming into the season without all of them? Was there any apprehension? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was interesting because, you know, it, it feels like the cast are all your brothers and sisters, you know what I mean? So, you know, you're, and your friends on and off, uh, at work and out of work. So yeah, it was a little, there's a little apprehension, but there's something about that show to where as soon as it gets going by like the Wednesday of the first week, it just kind of feels like the show again i mean obviously there's big differences but you just start getting back into it immediately and you're kind of thrust in onto that train that's not stopping so but i obviously miss all those people a lot because um you know we were all super close and hanging out all the time so you know that part's a bummer but the work part you just get back into it if that makes sense for sure. Like it's always like leading up, it always feels like the first day of school and then once you're doing it and there, you're like, Okay, it's the show again. Feels kind of the same. Yeah, for sure. I mean, with so many young cast members coming into the show and, you know, a lot of the turnover, did you view yourself as a little bit of a mentor or guide to them? What's it been like working with some of that new talent? They're all I love all the new kids. They're all fantastic. Yeah, it did feel a little weird being like a senior, just kind of hanging out with the freshmen. But I would tease them and be like, it's your first table read, buddy. And just kind of have fun with them. But they've all been great. But yeah, again, it, it, it is so weird. I have to take a step back every once in a while and be like, wow, kind of one of the elder cast members on SNL, it's it still hits me every once in a while where you just kind of want to have a moment of reflection or whatnot. But yeah, it's been fun with all the new kids. Again, it feels different like that first Monday and Tuesday and then midway through the table read on Wednesday, it just feels like, okay, this is what it is now and feels normal. It's weird how that happens. It always happens for me at least. For sure. Has there been any of the new cast members that you've had a particularly great bond with that you started to connect to in the way that you did with some of the cast members previously? Um, everyone but Marcelo, but no. <laughs> um, can you imagine? Um, I feel like I'm close with all of them uh, cool. e equally. They all feel like, you know, family. Um, Marcelo and I sort of bonded over the world cup when that was happening although he i was going for argentina he was going for brazil because my uh fiance is argentine so uh we definitely had some fun over the world cup we actually did a world cup weekend update feature at dress but it was mm -hmm. cut uh but yeah i i mean i feel like i'm close with all of them the best molly story which I still quote to this day. I leave, it was like the second week when Brendan Gleeson was hosting. And we had a sketch, I believe it was, we did it at dress. It might, I think it was cut, yeah. Anyway, he had to come in with a fire extinguisher and um, extinguish a little fire on a candle. A lit candle, a fire on a candle, a lit candle. Anyway, he was kind of, he he was, I guess a little apprehensive about just kind of blasting this fire extinguisher. This was during rehearsal and Molly, he was just kind of like, okay. And just, it was a kind of a quiet moment and we were just kind of hanging out waiting. And then Molly just went, you got this Mr. Gleason. <laughs> it was my favorite. So supportive. 
so encouraging. And every other day I quote to Molly, you got this, Mr. Gleason. Um, They're awesome. Anyway, I get might have been a you had to been there situation, but. No, it's a great story. Yeah. I, I love they're, it. Thank they're, you. They're all great. All Absolutely. The are, are fantastic. So in addition you to your- this, Mike Murray. Catalog <laughs> of air time, man. <laughs> Just want to see. watch him do it. It's really cool. It's a very stop. cool thing. So stop and stop and start. Or does he do it all with uh, like an algorithm or something? Is it all? Um, I, I I don't know, but he does he does host one of our shows on a weekly basis called By the Numbers, where he really gets into all that. So that is a plan. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a first call time yeah. caller. Yeah. Most of the SNL community actually does feel might be like this could be your greatest season ever because of the really creative sketches that you've been putting out there. So I'd so love nice. to ask you. Yeah, I'd love to ask you about your inspiration for a couple of them. First, uh, that traffic altercation sketch with Quinta. I mean, that was just unbelievable. A lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. How did that come together? I had done that live a long time ago at Groundlings. It was a, it was a very, it, the bones of it were there. And then it, I had forgotten about it. And then it, on right night last week, I just remembered it. And I'm like, I wonder if that could be retooled. I mean, it, and then it kind of redid it for the live setting. And then obviously you have Quinta, who's fantastic and the strengths of her as a performer. But that was a lot of fun. I did. I wasn't sure it could be if the camera angles would work and they had to get two full-size sedans <laughs> in the studio, which I guess they cut in half and bring them in a freight elevator. I've never seen them do it. There's just always, you show up and there's uh, full vehicles in the studio. But it was funny at read through because you kind of check in with the host and I just checked in with Quinta and I'm like, here's the vibe. We're like very gesticulating and kind of yelling at each other, which she totally got it, but you're kind of making it up as you, you go along at table read. And I didn't, I really didn't give her any specific like signs to do like gestures so she was pretty much on her own to like figure everything out at the table, which she did wonderfully. The only thing I said was just to eat my butt and point to your butt. Otherwise, you're kind of on your own, but she did great. She was awesome. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. That one was, it was weird being in a car in the studio, just sitting in a car, but you're also in the studio. Yeah. Um, that one was so good. Yeah. And then the, the other one that we really loved over the last few weeks was the Waffle House pre-tape that you did with Jenna Ortega. And not not the Jonas Brothers Waffle House, but your Waffle House. I, <laughs> yeah. I wrote the Jonas so Brothers Waffle House song. You know, we were saying on Saturday, we wish that your character from the Waffle House sketch appeared in the background of Jonas Brothers performing Waffle House on SNL just to have that runner. But um, <laughs> but for me, so I, I love that pre-tape. Sure. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, that was, uh, did that with Streeter Saito. He just came in on Tuesday and was like, I, I want to do a sketch with a bunch of crazy stuff happening in the Waffle House in the background and in the foreground is like a teen drama. So we just came up with a bunch of crazy stuff. But that character was a lot of fun. And I had a Dukes of Hazard tattoo. It's kind of hard to see. Not everyone saw it, but we were really proud of that Dukes of Hazard tattoo on the back. But that was a lot of fun. Like, we shot Marcelo and Jenna shot their stuff in front of a green screen. And then the Waffle House stuff was shot separate and layered in. And it looks so good. It looks like they were doing it in front of that, that Waffle House. So that one, again, was like technically kind of weird in terms of the pre-production of it like talking to diva mike diva who directed it making sure because you have to like build in pauses and stuff for marcelo and and jenna just to cover all the stuff happening in the background and then you kind of have to mess with audio and stuff so kind of like a puzzle putting it together but mike did a fantastic job directing it like it looks great and all the the whole post-production team for like layering everything in 
it looks really cool. And that was just a lot of fun. It was fun shooting it because we kind of shot it in order. So, you know, Heidi and Molly started and then, you know, I came in and then as people entered the scene, you know, they, I mean, they would show up on set one by one. So we'd be like, Keenan, look at this crazy man with no pants. And then Punky rolling up. It was fun to see everyone in costume as these crazy people as the day unfolded. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. And it was too like freeing because it was just kind of like a couple angles on us. So, I mean, the, the lines were scripted, but there was a lot of improv too to kind of, so there was all, sure. there was freedom to kind of be these characters for a while. Like Heidi, yeah. I knew, I know Heidi from Groundling. So we're pretty close. So we were just coming up with stupid bits and improv the whole that we, we knew would never make it, but just to entertain ourselves. So all day, just messing around. So that was, that was a fun shoot. That was a good one. I was really proud of that one. Yeah, you should be. I mean, I was looking at the list of sketches you've worked on this season, and you should be very proud of everything you've done. Between those two, Mario Kart, the State Farm with Michael B. Jordan, uh, David S. Pumpkins, number two. Uh, oh, so the many sequel, good, yeah. Yeah, so many good ones this season. Yeah, right? so you, you're been, feeling good overall uh, season 48? Yeah, it's, it goes by fast. It goes by fast, but the beginning feels like years ago, if that makes sense. Totally. But when you're That's in it, the weeks go by really fast. But it's been a really fun season. Thank you for the kind words. And Absolutely. for all you guys do, all the nice things, thank you. Thanks for alerting alerting me to the fact that it's 500. That's wild. Well, congratulations. And last question for you. Obviously, it's been, uh, it'll be about 10 years since you started working at the show. Season 39, I guess you started as oh. a writer. So. We all want you to stick around for a long time at the show because I think you still have a lot of stuff to bring to the show. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. In the plans, you're, hopefully you'll stick around with us. Yes, I hope. I mean, it's the best job in the universe. So, and it's, and it's so unique and there's nothing else like it and it's so much fun. So I'm always like, as long as it's fun, it would be awesome to stick around. So hopefully I can like, I don't know, um, influence Lauren somehow. Make sure, make sure Lauren's will have me back forever. Yeah. I have, I don't know. It, it, it would be fun to stick around because it's okay. It's very fun. Well, good. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. The entire SNL community absolutely loves you. So we appreciate everything that you gave to us today and for your time. So, Thank you. Uh, SNL all the best Network. to you, Mikey. All right, we did it. Yes, we got to talk to the great Mikey Day, current cast member and writer at Saturday Night Live. What a fun conversation that I had. So privileged to get to talk to him. James, did you enjoy our talk today with Mikey? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. He is, uh, it's fun to hear him talk about sort of being a mentor uh, to the younger cast. And, uh, you know, he, he enjoys it. It's just really cool to hear him talk about how much he enjoys being a part of the show. For sure. I think my biggest question coming into the, into this conversation today was, you know, with all of the castmates leaving that he was so close with, would it just be weird for him to come to the show? Like, imagine you are in school and all of your friends leave and then you have to either, you know, redo a grade or go back to the same class. Like, are you going to be able to thrive or survive? And, and I think he's thriving on the show right now, clearly seems to be enjoying himself and has having a lot of fun with the new cast members. Absolutely. And for those listening, uh, you might not know this. We, we recorded this interview with Mikey on a Monday during show week. He was he was lax. He was cool. He was laid back. He was kind of giddy. It was it was really fun. A really fun vibe, I thought. Yeah, I think he was great. So I'm really appreciative of that. And I was also thrilled at the end to get to hear that he probably will be sticking around at the show. And I think that the new blood that they brought into the show has inspired him to keep going. So I hope we get a lot of really great Mikey and Streeter sketches coming up soon. So um, James, anything else from the interview that you really enjoyed? He seems to really uh, gel well with and have and have just a, a great time with our, with our newest cast members with the four of them which i think is really cool 
Absolutely. Well, I just want to thank our friends at NBC for putting that together for us and Mikey Day for his time. Our hope here at the Saturday Night Network is that we get to talk to many current cast members throughout their times at the show and get to hear their perspective on things because we love celebrating what they do at Saturday Night Live. So if you are enjoying all of the content you get here, not just the interviews with current cast members and alumni that I do with James on SNL Stories, maybe you enjoy our hot take shows, roundtables, our statistic shows, just like Mikey did. He loves the stats he said he likes the screen time so uh by the numbers you can always check out that show with mike murray uh you can of course subscribe to the podcast on youtube apple podcasts and spotify make sure to follow us on social media facebook twitter tiktok and instagram and james much more to come right much more to come yeah yeah for sure so many more fun things to come including some more interviews before we wrap up season 48 so uh for james stevens and john schneider from the saturday night network We will see you next time, everybody. Have a good one.